Hey guys, welcome to Adreno Tips. Today we're going to be talking about shore diving. It's the most basic way to get into the sport without the outlay of a boat and things like that. If you don't have access to a boat, shore diving is going to be the only way you can get into the spot. Shore diving can be quite limited. It relies heavily on the natural elements, wind, tide, rain, viz, everything you can think of. Every location, it's going to depend on these natural elements. With shore diving, you obviously want there to be minimal swell, minimal wind. The best thing about shore diving when it comes to wind is you can actually dive on either side of the headland a lot of the time. If you're having a pretty big northerly, dive on the southern side. If you're having a big southerly, go on the north side. Another big thing that's going to affect your shore dive is the amount of rain that has been in your local area within the last week or so. Uh, with a big downfall of rain or a flood, you're pretty well guaranteed that if you're diving a headland within a couple of kilometers of a uh, outflow of a river, then you're gonna have horribly brown, dirty viz. The best conditions for a shore dive on the east coast of Australia, in my opinion, is going to be diving on the top of a high tide, a swell under a meter, uh, southerly wind under well, five to 10 knots, and no rain for last week. If all these conditions line up for you, it means you're gonna have a clearer, safer dive. A handy tool that everyone has access to to find shore dive spots is Google. Using Google Earth is an easy way to find pinnacles, uh, broken reef off the headlands, and gutters along the headlands as well. While you're there on Google, you might as well look up your local area. Make sure that the places you want to dive aren't green zones. What I like to do before I go on a shore dive is I like to sit on the headland. I like to look at a few different things. As I look at how easy it is to get in and out of the water, and I look and make sure that I know exactly where I'm going to in and out, depending on swell. That way you know you're going to be safe. Another one is I look at where I think the fish that I want to target are going to be. And also a massive thing is looking at the local traffic. Is there boats, jet skis in the area? Is there other divers? Is there fishermen? All these different hazards that you really want to stick away from. The species of fish that you're going to find on your shore dive will depend on the location. You can, depending on where you are, you'll be able to find anything from whiting, crays, if you're very lucky, marlin. Um, again, this comes down to where, you, where you're diving and what fish you're chasing. Whilst I'm sitting on the headland, a big thing I also like to do is to identify what species I want to be chasing or where I'm going to be chasing them. So what you'll see from the headland, you'll see gutters, hopefully. They'll have whitewash over the top. Now that's where I'm going to be chasing things like Jew, Bram, Luderick. If I'm chasing things like whiting, I'll be on the leeward side, so the calm side of the headland, right up in the shallows near the sand in some broken reef, you're gonna find flathead, whiting, things like that. If you're wanting to chase a few more reef species and get the odd pelagic, then what you'll be wanting to do is to dive off the headland 50 to 100 meters, depending on what depth you're in. Pretty much all you wanna be having on you within your dive is your wetsuit, mask, snorkel, knife, gun, float and float line, and a catch bag. When it comes to guns, what I like to use is a little one meter with twin 16s and a seven mil. There's pretty much not a single fish on a headland that you won't be able to shoot with that. Personally, I wouldn't be taking flashes and things like that out, obviously unless I'm chasing kingfish on the headlands. So a big reason as to why I like to keep a bare minimum, as it makes it heaps easier to get in and out of the water, safer, you're gonna lose less gear. It also makes it a lot easier to walk back to the car if you've got you know, a 20 kilo jew over your shoulder or a handful of fish or some craze. The biggest thing about shore diving is it's an adventure. Uh, best thing I like about it is going down the beach, rolling out a swag, having a beer, having a fire, going to sleep, waking up and having a dive first thing in the morning. Pretty hard to beat. Um, end of the day, you can also jump straight out of the water if you're starting to feel a bit seasick or anything like that. Jump straight out of the water, super cruisy. I personally prefer to shore dive than I do dive out of a boat. <laughs>